Kaif, President of the Republic of Kazakhstan, Excellencies, Distinguished Heads of Delegation, Good morning and Assalamu alaikum. It's a great honor and privilege for me to address the sixth summit of the Conference on Interaction and Conference Building Measures in Asia. And I am very grateful for the warm welcome and generous hospitality extended to me and my delegation in this beautiful city of Astana. Pakistan attaches great importance to the SICA platform. The conference has been playing an important role in enhancing cooperation and promoting trust and understanding on the Asian continent. We highly value Kazakhstan's leadership and deeply appreciate the vision offered by Kazakhstan in transforming SICA into an international organization through an incremental and consensus-based approach. Mr. Chairman, Pakistan is living through a colossal climate-induced calamity, unprecedented rains and flooding that have submerged more than one-third of my country are without any doubt the consequence of global warming and climate change. The initial estimates of total loss to our economy is to the tune of over $30 billion. And I have spent the last many weeks going from one place to the other watching devastation with my own eyes. I have embraced people, children, and of course those marooned who have lost everything, perhaps even their dreams. And I have marshaled all the resources at my disposal for rescue, relief, and rehabilitation. But I am grappling with the sinking feeling that we just do not have enough at hand. The force of nature of climate change has truly overwhelmed us. What makes this situation even more tragic is that even though Pakistan is responsible for less than 1% of global carbon emissions, yet we are among the top 10 countries most severely impacted by climate change. This disaster may set Pakistan back by decades. More than 1,600 Pakistanis, including children, have lost their lives. Thousands of kilometers of road infrastructure and bridges are washed away. Entire villages have been swallowed up by raging waters. Cotton, wheat and rice crops lie in ruins. <coughs> Vast stretches of land today resemble an ocean. Navy boats run where once children played football and cricket. Mr. Chairman, Pakistan needs immediate help. Our 33 million climate refugees, that is more than the population of many countries. These climate refugees need to be rehabilitated. And today, I am personally grateful to the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, for having visited Pakistan last month. We are very thankful to the UN for the fresh flash appeal of $816 million for Pakistan earlier this month. Many countries have also pledged financial assistance and sent relief goods. On behalf of my nation, let me thank each and every one of them for their acts of generosity and empathy. And I can see many leaders sitting around this table who have been generously committing support to Pakistan 
and I thank you all from the core of my heart. And ladies and gentlemen, we look forward to your continued support as we transition to the more daunting phase of rehabilitation and reconstruction. And let me assure you, we are determined and we are committed by the grace of God that we will emerge stronger from these floods and we shall, inshallah, bounce back in a very short period of time. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, Pakistan's location offer the natural bridge and conduit among regional economies. The China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, the flagship project of the Belt and Road Initiative, has transformed the economic and connectivity landscape of the region. We invite our friends to take advantage of the opportunities for trade, business and investment in Pakistan. Excellencies, four decades of conflict and instability in Afghanistan have taken a heavy toll on millions of Afghan people and imperiled peace and security of all the countries in the world. Pakistan has borne the most serious consequences of the conflict in Afghanistan. We have suffered over 80,000 casualties and economic losses of over $150 billion in the fight against terrorism. And finally, by the grace of God, we were able to beat terrorism of all shades and color in Pakistan. Not only in Pakistan, it has sent a great message to peace-loving world across the globe that out of these great sacrifices, Pakistan has been able to become a country instrumental in controlling terrorism and extremism. To this day, we continue to host about 4 million Afghan refugees on our soil. A peaceful, stable, united and prosperous Afghanistan is in the best interest of Pakistan, not only Pakistan, the entire region and the international community. We call upon the world to support the people of Afghanistan in their quest for sustainable peace, stability and development. Mr. Chairman, Pakistan's first priority is to revive rapid and equitable economic growth. To do so, stability in the region is most essential. Pakistan desires peaceful relations with all its neighbors, including India. However, until India brings its atrocities in occupied Kashmir to a grinding halt, a just and lasting peace will remain elusive. For seven decades, India has defied the will of the United Nations, as reflected through the two UN resolutions on Kashmir. For seven decades, India has trampled the will of the people of Jammu and Kashmir by denying them the right of self-determination. And for seven decades, India has used repression to silence the voice of Kashmiris demanding their inalienable rights. I would therefore urge all of you to look behind the gloss of Indian democracy and recognize the brutal nature of its policies in occupied Kashmir. In this terrorized valley of Kashmir, India brandishes democracy not through the ballot but through its bullet. Here, Indian democracy is known less for its rights and freedoms and more for its repression and brutality. The truth is, and hard and harsh fact is, that India today is a threat to its minorities, to its neighbors, to its region, and to itself. And yet, Your Excellencies, we are willing to engage with India for the sake of peace, prosperity, and progress in the region, because we cannot afford to have more poverty, unemployment, 
on both sides of the, bar of the border. We just cannot afford to deploy and commit our meager resources towards creating tension. Enough is enough. We need to really provide education, health and medicine and jobs to our children, millions of our children, both sides of the divide. And if we did not act speedily, posterity will not forgive us. Therefore, I am absolutely ready and willing to have serious dialogue and discussion with our counterparts, Indians, provided they show sincerity of purpose and they show that they are ready to discuss issues which have really kept us at, uh, at, a, at, a, at a distance over decades and creating tension, not promoting trade, not promoting investment. This has to come to a stop. And I am absolutely committed and ready to move forward to provide an opportunity to our generations, to our future generations, and leave a legacy that finally we were able to realize the gravity of the situation and finally here we are that we with a great mind and great hearts did a job which will which would provide peace progress for all time to come but the onus remains on India to take the necessary step for meaningful and result oriented engagement we also need to urgently find political solutions to the conflicts in the Middle East and elsewhere in Asia. A just and lasting settlement of the Palestinian question is essential for comprehensive peace in the Middle East. Mr. Chairman, we reaffirm our commitment to the SICA process and the concept of common, comprehensive, cooperative and sustainable security in Asia. These giants sitting on my right, on my left, Allah Almighty has blessed upon all of us and all of them huge bounties and resources. If we team our resources and efforts together, I have no doubts in my mind that Asia and joining parts can really stand up and walk with a sense of pride and achievement through meaningful interaction and constructive dialogue we can build and bolster mutual confidence and trust we are facing great difficulties but I am undaunted by the sultry weather I am one of those along with you who believe in eternal justice believe in Allah Almighty I have no doubt in my mind with the support of people of Pakistan and with the support of our friendly and brotherly countries, Pakistan will and shall come out of this problem. Thank you very much. God bless you.